We know they have energy. They could run 40 miles around the house, but they can't walk half a mile down the trail because they decided they didn't want to. Welcome back everybody. Um, if you've been around for a little while, you've seen me, I'm Josh, and you may have seen Sarah just a little bit on some of the videos. This is my wife. And obviously if you've been around for a little while, you've seen this camper that we're sitting in and we're working on that. So if you're just here for the camper build, sorry, this video is not gonna be camper build. I'm not in this. <laughs> well, you are sometimes, but no, not. not as much. But we're not working on the camper today. We actually just got back from a two-day trip up into the Ozarks where we hiked and camped and had a good time and it snowed on us. So that was that was a fun trip and we'll have a video coming up on that soon um, showing that trip and what we did out there. So come back for that because that was, that was fun. The snow nice. made everything a lot more interesting. It was, it was a good trip. Really, really good time. Beautiful, fun. beautiful places out there. Um, but today... We're going to talk about hiking with kids a little bit. We went on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and did a few posts out asking for questions on from people hiking with kids. We've both been hiking a lot in our lifetimes, and we've continued that through college, through our relationship, and then after getting married and hiked with all through pregnancies. We have four kids. We've got a six-year-old, a four-year-old, a two-year-old and a six-month-old. Got it right. Got them all right. And we've hiked through. It's varied from year to year how much we do, but we've hiked yeah. all through all four pregnancies with all the kids as mm -hmm. infants and as they've grown up. And we hike with them all now. This this weekend we did a three-mile hike in the um, in the snow and the rain and stuff. So we've got some questions from some different people, and we're going to go through those. And we've kind of got. We got a bunch. We're probably going to split this up into multiple videos. I think we'll do more basics of hiking with kids in this one and then maybe break it down. We got a lot of questions about carriers and backpack carriers and what some gear questions and we'll probably do that later because carriers is kind of an in-depth subject. So we'll probably bring out the kids and do a demonstration of what we use and what's worked for us and some things we've learned over the course of hiking with four kids. We're not experts, but we've done a fair amount. So we've learned a few things and there's lots of things we could learn and we're still learning all the time. So, but we'll share with you what we can in the areas that we know some about. And there's certain areas that we'll just tell you, go talk to an expert, you know, first aid, things like that. You need training from an expert, not from somebody like us. So first question. What are some basics that I should know? or keep in mind before going on a hike with children as well. Yeah, we're well, mostly, well, mostly going to gear it to children, but somewhat in general too. Um, it's a lot easier to go without children because you don't have little lives to worry about. It's just they yourself. You out. So out. it definitely, it adds a different dynamic over going by yourself. But as far as basics, if you've never been hiking and you just want to get started, some of the main things is just kind of knowing, not pushing yourself too far at the beginning and knowing your fitness level, your kid's fitness level, their age is going to make a big difference yeah. as far as how far they can walk and the type of terrain they can go on. So if you're just going to start out, you might start out at more of a basic, maybe even a paved trail around somewhere. Oh, yeah. Or, and then the next step after like something simple and small would be maybe go, probably to a state park is going to be where your more maintained trails are or trails that have been, are more kept. If you get into bushwhacking and stuff, everything gets more difficult, especially with kids. So someplace that the trails are more used or more maintained is just going to be easier. And you're probably going to want to start out with, I mean, kind of depends on your fitness level. But you could start out with a quarter mile, half mile, a mile. So like 
for instance, in Arkansas, like probably the beginner place to go start hiking would be like Pettigene. There's a wide range of trails there, different levels. There's some that are really short and you're never far right. from your car. So you could go do like the Bear Cave Trail or the Rock House Cave Trail. Yeah, the and cages. they're they're pretty easy. You're, you're close to your car. You're not going to get stranded out in the middle of nowhere or something if mm -hmm. something happens or you find out you're in over your head. And in a state park, there's typically going to be more readily available emergency response people yes. that are close by. And more hikers, if something does happen, there's other people that may be able to help you out. So basics would be start small, kind of assess your abilities and your kids' abilities, and then see how much you like it before you start investing money or pushing into more difficult hikes. Yeah. What else? Well basics i mean um what distance water. is not always like a exact definition of how easy or moderate you can have a very short difficult hike so if like you go to a place like pedaging pick up the brochures check out and they'll say is this an easy trail is it moderate is it difficult and use that as a guide as well yeah a lot of the state parks will have kind of ratings on the trails and there's yeah. a lot of other books and guides webs. around places in Arkansas and other places that give more information about the hikes so you know yeah. is this a bushwhack is this a trail is this an easy is this difficult and the all trails app gives some information like that just different resources you could do a little bit of research and pull up and yeah. see kind of what the trail might be like and and go from there and another thing would be don't ever worry about having to turn around before you get to something. There's been plenty of times where we've hiked to something mm -hmm. and we're as we're going, we're going, okay, this is an in and out hike. Can we make it all the way down, all the way out? And if we need to, then we just need to call it at a certain point right. because someone's not doing well, they're having a bad time, they're not just not yeah. hiking well that day or well, yeah. anything. <laughs> Be okay with all right we're not going to make it to the waterfall or the overlook we just got to turn around today sometimes that happens but just part of it you can't push yourself too far and go all the way in and then not be able to make it back out so yeah. in and out hikes are kind of like that sometimes you drain yourself going in if you're not paying attention and then you're wore out coming out yeah then also sometimes, sometimes you're motivated to get out so you just plow through it come out but the kids don't plow as well That'd be another basic of going with kids is not pushing them too hard. That's probably more my problem. No, but, probably mine. <laughs> I get to, this is my objective, this is what I want to do, and then I'll, I'll be trying to reach that. And with kids, you've just got to be more flexible. Sometimes yes. you just got to slow down or you got to stop and take more breaks. Whereas I could keep pushing, she could keep going. But the kids can't, and they need to stop. They need a drink. They need a break. They need a snack. They're tired. <laughs> they just don't want to walk. Yeah. Anymore. What? And Fifteen sometimes. minutes of downtime, and goofing good. off on the side of the trail and getting some sort of snack and a drink, can supply a massive energy boost. Yeah. Snacks for the win. Always take snacks on hiking trips with small children. And that's part of going with kids is channeling. They all got energy. We know they have energy. They could run 40 miles around the house, but they can't walk half a mile down the trail because they decided they didn't want to. They're done. <laughs> the motivation can be a little a little difficult at times. And I think so, we actually... It's that, a question somewhere. Next question. <laughs> How do you motivate kids to want to go hike? It's you want bribe to... them. You do. You do. You not, not really. Them. Well, sort of. Well, you bribe them with the objective, like, hey, we get to go see a waterfall. And they're like, okay, that sounds cool. We want to do that. And they feed off your enthusiasm. If you're motivated, they're motivated. Yeah, at least to a of. certain extent. It definitely um, helps. If you're just like, ugh, they're going to be like, ugh. But yes. sometimes kids are also just going to be, I don't want to walk. Yes. And... And that's so, where you have to know your kid, too. You can't just, like, force them or they're going to be grouchy. And that's just not 
really good parenting. You just force your kids to go hike and be miserable. Well, sometimes it's <laughs> Maybe good Maybe if they're parenting. a teenager, they <laughs> need that. Sometimes it's good parenting. Get but out there and get fresh air. With younger kids, like we have, we don't bribe them. We're not just going to be like, walk another 10 steps and you can have a fruit snack. And then walk another 10 steps and you can have a piece of candy. That's not going to make it enjoyable. A lot of it no. is trying to incorporate it. get them to enjoy what they're seeing. The beauty of rocks and moss and flowers and trees and birds and the views and the waterfalls. A lot of yeah. really amazing things to see out there. And being able to take your time and enjoy that along the way and teach them to enjoy it and show yeah. them neat things i think a lot of what we do though is we go especially with gideon he's he's our two-year-old he enjoys bugs and all sorts of creatures so we'll try to look for those and then we're like hey look here's a beetle and he's excited and he yeah, wants to caterpillars caterpillars centipedes so don't touch it you can't touch it because it can hurt you yeah look at it yeah i think it no it doesn't hurt those it's, it yeah, was unfortunate that they weren't, it's winter. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't anything So there the wasn't, but, but so like at one point I had him and he was exhausted and tired. And I'm like, hey, look, <laughs> there's a spider web. I don't know how old the spider web was. It was a little bit tough of snow at the end. So it was like billowing in the wind and attached to a tree. So I noticed it and I'm like, hey, look, there's a spider web. We can look for spiders and it kind of got his mind off of it for a mild yeah bit. so distracting them from the arduous part of the heist because that there's just parts that are just like that and you sometimes you just have to push through them and getting them to see the beauty in creation and different things around mm -hmm. and enjoy enjoy the hike and, sometimes and as they get older they get a little bit at least ours have gotten where they enjoy it more and our oldest is competitive, so she wants to go faster than her brothers. Yes. And so there's a little bit of that. Hey, they're catching up to you. Or, well, yeah, they can do it. Sometimes that doesn't need to be encouraged. Yes, but we I do, know, we don't but... bribe per se, but we do set kind of milestones. So a lot yeah. of times on our hikes, we'll try to get, we'll kind of lay it out where the main point of view would be around lunchtime. So we do a lot of hikes that last four to six hours at least three to four hours it, it varies a lot but we when we do a longer we hike <laughs> we'll we'll have multiple breaks in different places and maybe have snacks but we'll then we'll have like the main waterfall we're going to see or at the overlook we're going to stop there and we'll pack cheese and crackers some sort of food that we're going to take and we'll stop there for 30 minutes or however long for more of a lunch break and so mm -hmm. When you're getting closer to that point, maybe they're starting to get a little worn down. You can be, well, we're almost here, and mm -hmm. then we're going to have lunch. And that helps helps motivate them because they're looking forward to that. And then I'll sometimes pull out. A lot of times I use my an app on my phone to track us on mm -hmm. GPS. And they so that can be kind that. of fun. It I usually do it on the way back <laughs> is where we use it. I'll pull it out and be like, hey, you want to see where we're at? And we can see where the little arrow is, where we're at. And then I'd be like, and right over here is where the vehicle's at. So this is how far we've gone, and this is where we've got to go. And they kind of like, they'll be like, hey, can we see where we're at on the map? And we'll pull that out. And that kind of. It just anything you can do to help break up trudging not, through me. the woods. Because there's, there is a lot of beautiful things, and it just some of that they have to be taught to see. And sometimes some hikes just are tired. just, yeah, they just get tired. And then sometimes there's points where. You just kind of got to get it over with. But you don't want everything to be like that and where it's no fun for you and it's no fun for them. So if it's getting that far, you might need to scale back a little bit. Might be pushing it too hard. Somebody's tired. What? So we just finished <laughs> answering eight of your questions and the video is 45 minutes long. So we may split it up. <laughs> We'll see. If you see this, this means we're splitting it up into two or three. I don't know. We'll see. You'll see. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Calm Something down. like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Stay tuned for more. Yep. It's going to be because of bug flying. Yes, there is. It's over there.
over there. It's cool. No, it was right there. It was right there. Yeah, it's a fly. Well, knocked my blanket down. Mm-hmm. No, it's up there. Why is there flies out? It's cold. You squished it on the phone. Gross. Don't wipe it off on my pants. Ugh. Jerk. You're welcome. I love you, too. You should have It's another bag for you. Right there, crawling. You, you put a hole in the wall. It survived. It's all right. I can fix it. Solid. I made it. That's all I've done. not the most comfortable. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to lounge. Lounge. Uh, Ed, your legs are down like huge. Okay. <laughs>